So class, next topic that we're going to start, that is your functions. Okay. Now, what let's understand class what functions are. Okay. Functions are basically reusable. Functions are basically reusable block of code, okay, which is used used in case of case of a functionality. is used to implement a repeated functionality. Okay. Now let me explain. Suppose class, let's say in my code, I want to add some data multiple times. Okay. I want to just, just, just. You can see my screen now, right, class? Hmm. Okay. So now, class, suppose, let's say, I want to implement a particular functionality, okay, in my code, okay, which is basically doing some particular task. Suppose, let's say, there is, I want to add two numbers. Suppose I'm writing here, I'm taking some input from the user, x equal to int, input, enter x okay similarly i have taken y i have taken two numbers from the user okay and i want to add them together so i will write here z equal to x plus y and then i will print the value of z now suppose class see if i run this code it will invert syntax y sure So if I run this code here, I will write here maybe uh, five and two. Okay, so here it will give seven. Suppose class, let's say I am doing some other task. Okay, suppose I am saying print hello. Okay, then I am doing some other task. Let's say print uh, maybe hi. Okay, now what I want to do, I want to add these two numbers again. Some two, not necessarily same two numbers. 
it but i want to implement the functionality of addition now suppose let's say i again want to do something else maybe let's suppose i am saying print uh, how are you some random functionality i am showing you okay then i again want to add two numbers okay so here there is a particular functionality of addition which i want to implement at multiple times in the code okay now that particular functionality is getting repeated okay but it is not repeating getting repeated continuously okay suppose let's say i want to add a particular number five times so what i can do i can simply write for uh, i in range of five okay and i will write this code here so it'll take five numbers okay continuously okay one by one and it will add them together this will happen this will happen. this what it what this particular code will do plus this will take this will add the numbers con consecutively like one after another it will do it but i don't want to i don't want to do it repeat I do, I, consecutively but i do want to repeat a particular task multiple times in the code suppose let's say i want to drink tea okay so there are two options either i can drink five cups of coffee uh, five cups of tea continuously okay like first cup then second cup then third cup then fourth cup then fifth cup okay in this can be implemented using for loop but okay what you usually do we drink five cups of tea but over the entire day okay and then there and in that also there is no fixed time interval okay i can drink tea at any point in the entire day are you getting this class or not everyone We want to implement a particular functionality, okay? But at any point we can do that in the entire code. So in that case, what you can do, class here, let me explain. Instead of writing the code like this, see here you can see line num number of lines is four, okay? Here number of lines used here is again four. So eight number of lines got used. Now what I will do? Instead of doing this, I will create a function. How? I will create a function called as add followed by parenthesis followed by a colon and I will put this entire thing inside this function definition. Okay. Now this particular thing that you can see here is called as function definition. This is called as function definition. So if I write here class add simply add so what will happen class it, you can see let me explain first the code came here okay i executed this particular cell okay so just like class just like when you write x equal to 12 when you write x equal to 12 in the code so what will happen python will do what it will go to the memory it will take a random memory location name that memory location is x and it will store 12 inside that memory location right this is what happens in case of variables. Similarly, in case of functions, whenever you define a function, so what will Python do? Okay, it will go to the memory. It will go to the memory. It will take a random memory location. Okay, it will name that memory location as add. Okay, and whatever instructions that you have written, one, two, three, four, those four instructions will get stored inside that memory as it is those instructions will not get executed in case of function definition. We are just defining the function. Okay. Consider this in this manner. Understand this in this manner. Suppose let's say I live in Delhi. I am from Delhi. Okay. And uh, suppose I am going to some other state. Okay. For some time. Okay. So what my mother did. Okay. Because I don't know how to make coffee. What my mother did. She took a paper. And on that piece of paper she wrote how to make coffee steps basically so that now that particular paper is acting as a function definition to make coffee have i already start like when when my mother gave that paper to me okay so have like did i already start making the coffee class no no i just saw the paper i started reading the paper okay that is just your function definition. I am not executing the code yet. No, it is just a function definition. Okay. Now what will happen? So code will come here. 
okay it will basically store this function definition entire function definition in the in the memory now next step that will happen is code will come to the function this is called as function call okay so when we say function call so function call is actually the is basically the actual implementation of the function when we execute the function definition that is called as function call so now the code will come here add now from here it will go suppose let's say uh, let's say devashish is there devashish comes to my house okay and as a guest okay and i, I basically have to make coffee for him okay so what i am do at that time i will take out that piece of paper from my pocket okay and then i will go to the kitchen and i will start following the instructions one by one so what i will do i will go here okay i will implement the first instruction that is written so i will take x okay as input then followed by i will take next instruction then next instruction then next instruction coffee is done coffee is made now i will after implementing the last instruction i will come back to the main code that means here you can see devashish came he was in the living room okay from living room i went to kitchen okay i implemented all the functionalities of all the instructions after implementing all the instructions i came back to the living room got this class or not everyone
Can you see my class now? Can you see my screen now, class? Okay. So now let's continue here. So what will happen? The code will come. Okay, let me do one thing. I will explain using numbers. First, the code will come here. Okay, function definition is already stored in the memory. So it will come here, then here, then here, then here, then here, and then it will come back to the living room back. Clear class or no? All of you understood the concept of functions. Now, why we basically, you can say like, why, why are we creating functions? Okay, because now we can call this function any time, any number of times in the entire code as we want to. Suppose class, like here you can see, I've written this code. Okay, so wherever there is this addition part, so what I can do, instead of like writing these four lines of code, I can do what? I can simply write add. Instead of writing these four lines of code, I can simply write add. So here you can see initially it was how, how long the code was? 11. Okay, so what will happen class here? If I want to like, let's say I want to add again, I will write add. Let's say I want to add again, I will simply write add. So any number of times class, I want to call the function, we can do that. Now here in this kind of cases, now function definition is present only one time. In the entire code, what we usually follow, we keep the function definition at the top. Okay, and wherever in the code we want to call the function, we, we can directly call. All of you got the concept of function definition class? Okay. Now let's understand, let's proceed. Now I'm going to explain one concept that is called as scope. Okay. Scope basically means that, oh, uh, I have to be very precise. I am writing variables. Okay. So what, what, do, what do we understand the class concept of variable scope? Variable scope means like, limitation of variable okay where the variable can be accessed in the code where it cannot be accessed okay i will explain don't worry when we talk about variable scope there are two types of scope available there is local scope and there is global scope that means what happens class suppose like whenever we are creating some variable let me restart the code here why i'm restarting because i want to flush all the variables from the memory so that i can show this to you for on like directly Okay, I have restarted the entire kernel. What it will do, it will flush out the entire memory. So whatever variables were there in the memory now got flushed out. Now class, what will happen? I have defined this function definition. Okay, now what I will do? I will write here add. I will call this function. Okay, so you can see enter x, I will enter 8, enter y, and I will enter 5. It printed 13. Now, in the code here, I will write print x tell me class what do you think will be the output here
ideally what should be the output here class 13 how it should be 8 right because x value is 8 okay so if i run this code it should give me 8 but here you can see class it is throwing us an error okay name error that name x is not defined but here you can see that we have already defined the x variable so what is what exactly is happening here let's understand there is something called as i told you called as local scope that means what happens whenever okay let me write it here only local scope means the variables which are defined inside a function definition function definition can be accessed inside the function only the variables defined in main code can be accessed anywhere in the entire code okay that means here class you can see the x y and z these three variables we have defined inside the function definition that means the scope of these variables is local local means local to add function only with outside the add function they don't hold any significance okay they they, does, they are not present they cannot be accessed at all outside this function definition of add okay let me explain okay visually how this particular thing, thing happens see right class right now we're writing our whole entire code in the main code right so this is our main code okay this which we call as which we call it as global global namespace or you can say global memory for now okay same thing global namespace global memory same thing okay now what will happen what we did in our code here if you see we created this function definition right we created this function definition so what python did it came here inside this global namespace because we have created this function definition in the main code so that is why this function definition will get created here okay it will take a memory okay and here it will store the instructions okay there are four instructions inside the add function so one two three four it will store them as it is now as soon as you will call as soon as you call the add function as soon as you call the add function in your memory i am talking about this as soon as you call the add function in your memory what will python do python will go to the memory it will create another namespace it will create another namespace with the name with the which will be called as add namespace it will create another memory with the with the name add namespace okay and then it will start executing the add function. So now this x variable, suppose plus let's say I'm creating a variable here. Suppose I'm writing here maybe p is equal to 45. So what will happen in this case? Because I have created p equal to 45 in the main code, so Python will do what? It will go to the main memory. Okay. It will take a random memory location, name that memory location as p. And it will store 45 inside that memory location. Okay, this is what happens normally. But since this x, y, z are present inside the function definition, so as soon as you call the function definition add, okay, as soon as you call the function add, it will create a separate namespace with the name of the function, which in this case is add, okay, and it will create whatever variables you are using. Okay, in the add function, it will create them inside this namespace. So these three variables will get created here. Okay, first variable will be x, x create one, y create one, and z variable will create. Okay, whatever data we give, suppose let's say I'm giving eight as input, so eight will be stored here in the x variable. Suppose I am uh, let's say giving five, okay. 
five, and then there is let's say the addition of both of them thirteen. Okay, this will happen after completing after C. It took X, it took Y, it took Z for okay. It created all these things. Then it printed Z. Since I have written print Z inside the function definition only, because I am calling the function, I am calling the variable Z locally. So what it it will do? Whatever data is there, suppose Z is there, it will take this Z data and it will it it will be able to call it locally only because I am calling it from inside the namespace. Okay. Now here, what will happen? After executing all these four instructions, it will come back to the main code. So what happened plus this is the main namespace, global namespace. From the global namespace, it went to your add namespace. It executed X, Y, Z and print Z. Okay. And then it, it will come back after executing the entire function definition. It will come back to the global namespace always. Okay. After ex completing the function definition, it will come back to the location where from where the function was called from. The function was called from, from where? From the main code. So it will come to the global main namespace back. Okay. Now understand this class. As soon as it will come back to the global namespace, what will Python do? Python will completely flush out the namespace that was created for the add. Okay, it is not there in the memory anymore. That is why when you write print x, so it is throwing error. Okay, so it is not just about about it is not just it is x variable is present in separate memory. Okay, it is also about that x is not present in the entire computer in our system. Anywhere in the in the entire memory, anywhere it is not present because the memory got flushed out. Which memory? The memory which was created for that particular to execute that particular function. That memory got deleted as soon as the function got over. All of you got the entire thing? After print Z, yes. As soon as it will complete. As soon as it will complete the entire function definition. See, these four lines of code are there. Na? So after print Z, it will flush out. Clear class? Ha, after printing it, no. P equal to 45 is written in the main code, no? P equal to 45 in our in, in, in our case, it is written in global scope. Huh? Now let, let me explain global scope. Now, whatever variables class, whatever variables that are present in the global namespace, na, whatever variables are present. Okay, wait. Okay, now I think it is visible better. Okay, whatever variables class are present in the global namespace, okay, such as p equal to 45, okay, so the, they can be accessed from anywhere. You can access them inside the function also, outside the function also, okay, anywhere you can access them. Why? Just because he global namespace that never gets deleted. Global namespace will never get, like it never gets deleted, okay. It will get deleted when the entire main code is over. Okay, as soon as you close this Jupyter notebook, na, as soon as I click on the restart button or maybe I close this uh, Jupyter notebook, your global namespace will get deleted from the memory. Okay, but otherwise if your main code is working, okay, until it is complete, till then it will be present. Global namespace will be there until the end of the main code. There is no name of this temporary data. That is just a variable. You can call it as local variable. Local variable means that it is temporary. Clear class, everyone? So far, understood how functions work. Can anyone tell me, maybe guess, okay? 
कैन एनी वन गैस एंड टेल मी की वाई दे वाई दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शनिटी इज वाई दिस लोकल मेमोरी स्पेस इज गेटिंग डिलेटेड एवरी टाइम सपोज लेट्स कॉल लेट्स से आई एम कॉलिंग द एड फंक्शन फाइव टाइम्स ओके सो लिटरली वॉट विल हैपन कि एवरी टाइम द फंक्शन एड फंक्शन इज कॉल्ड इट विल क्रिएट अ सेपरेट एड नेम स्पेस ओके एंड इट विल फ्लश इट आउट एट द एंड ऑफ द एड नेम स्पेस डेट मीन्स इफ आई एम कॉलिंग इट फाइव टाइम्स सो इट विल बी क्रिएटेड फाइव टाइम्स इट विल बी फ्लश डॉट फाइव टाइम्स ओके नाउ हाँ ये सेंथिल एवरी कॉल ऑफ फंक्शन ओके ये लोकल मेमोरी विल बी क्रिएटेड एंड इट विल बी क्रिएट एवरी टाइम इफ यूर कॉलिंग इट हंड्रेड टाइम्स इट विल नो मैटर हाउ लाइक हाउ फ्रिक्वेंट यूर कॉलिंग इट ओके इवन इफ यूर कॉलिंग लाइक कंटिन्यूसली एड 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 टेन टाइम्स ओके इवन देन एवरी टाइम इट विल क्रिएट फ्लश ऑन इट विल क्रिएट फ्लश क्रिएट फ्लश ओके टू फ्री ये एक्सलेंट ओके वाई दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शनिटी ऑफ फंक्शन इज देयर ओके वाई बिकॉज Every time, see, tell me, class. Suppose, let's say, you don't need this data. You don't need this particular data x, y, of x, y, and z. You just need the addition of both of them. You don't need x and y. So, suppose, class, let's say, I am doing this particular concept. I am doing this particular uh, thing in the in my main code only, like here. I am not implementing this four four line five, four lines of code in the inside a inside any function definition. Okay, so in this case, what will happen? X, Y, and Z will get created in the global scope, na? They will get created in the global scope, right? In the global namespace. Okay. Now, suppose let's say once I have taken X and Y from the user as input, I don't need that data anymore. Okay, I don't need X and Y anywhere in the code anymore. I just need the Z variable. Okay, so is there any point of keeping the x and y variable till the end of the code? No, no, it is just vestige of memory, right? Okay, so that is why the concept of functions is there. That is another benefit. One when one benefit I have already told you that is your reusability. If you want to Im implement same functionality again and again, so you can create functions for that. Second benefit of uh, functions is that is like one of the major benefits. Okay, that is. memory management okay efficient use of memory basically so as soon as whatever variables are are you are creating inside the function okay as soon as the task is over so python will automatically flush out those variables from the memory because they are not required anymore which will ensure efficient use usage of memory your main memory will not main memory is kind of permanent permanent in the sense that as long as your code is running your main memory will be there till the end okay so and which usually happens what happens in in the in real life scenario main code will keep on running till infinity okay suppose let's say i'm like working in zomato okay so whatever code whatever the main code of zomato is it will be running 24 cross 7 na plus the code of zomato will be running like 24 cross 7 yes or no main code i am saying right it is not like they are running it on a daily basis okay no at uh, like da daily at 6 am someone the, someone will wake up they will run the code and they will close the code at 12 pm okay no it is not like that on a daily like it is continuously running 24 cross 7 so main code always runs so as to ensure ki the main memory does, doesn't get filled up unnecessarily okay so we have to ensure ki there are no random variables present in the in our code which is not required temporary variables we create inside the function so that they will automatically get flushed out what you can do from your end the x y and z you have created suppose you don't need x y x y anymore so simply write del x del y okay you can do this also but the problem with do with doing this is that you have to this is called as explicit deletion okay you have to explicitly write the code to delete them okay but when you are doing the same thing in case of function definition so this is called as implicit de deletion you don't have to delete the data from your end it will automatically get deleted 
from the memory python will handle them clear class everyone okay uh, local variable means defined inside a function yes the basis ha huh, yes every call to function variable uh, every call to function variable initialization clearance of local memory would happen yes and uh huh. yes 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 store memory loss what if you want to store the output for future jagdish i am coming to that also okay to remove a new uh, of memory okay when printing xyz outside of add function it's still printing values which is saved in input of add function trank that is why i told you na restart the kernel restart the kernel okay why i restarted because i earlier created x y and z in the memory here okay so x y and z are still present in, the, in your local in your global memory so restart your uh, kernel okay so that ev all the uh, everything will be flushed out from the global memory space ha huh, yes ma'am the global variable will not, will not get removed after printing yes ha huh, yes local variable will get print on the inside add only yes because i have created x y and z here inside the add function so i can use x y and z variable inside add function only outside the add function even if let's suppose i have created some another function multiply so even in that function i cannot use x y z okay i can use different x y z there let me i will explain that in a while okay but this x y z the data of this x y z cannot be used outside the add function anywhere at all so if global variable will not get removed that is also a waste of memory ha huh, yes exactly okay but mamta what happens na in global memory we keep only those variables we try i am saying we try to keep only those variables which are which you need multiple times in the code okay suppose let's say i am storing uh, let's say uh, for example let's talk about the code of zomato okay so if let's say i have placed as a as a as a what i would say uh, as a customer okay customer suppose let's say i am placing some order okay so that order is temporary with respect to zomato or not or do they need to store my data indefinitely no no that is temporary okay they will store it okay i need four chapatis okay and uh, two two sabzis okay and one card okay so they will store it okay temporarily as long as the order is getting made okay as soon as the order is delivered do they need this information again how many chapatis i ordered no they don't need this again right so they will save this data inside a function okay but the price of a particular item in a particular uh, restaurant okay that will be stored in a local variable or a global variable in the global variable right why price will be stored in ha huh, in a global variable because that will be used multiple times in the entire code ha huh, yes ranjit that okay what happens then in that case they will store data in a database separately once the order is placed they will store that all those all the all the data in a separate database so whenever you fetch the order history in your zomato what happens they will go to the database and fetch data from there i am talking about in the code in the inside the memory of the code they don't require that information anymore no so there are two memories working here one memory that is present inside the code one memory which is present x like separately from the code that is the database so every order that is placed that is present in the database class that is stored in the database later on okay but in the real time while the order is getting placed while the order is getting processed at that time the data is present in the memory also in the code memory also so in the code memory the data is will be present in local or global order data will be present in the local memory okay and your price data will be present in the global memory got this class everyone okay what are dots were there 
कैन वी हैव मल्टीपल लोकल वेरिएबल्स हाँ यस विशाल यर यू कैन सी ना एक्स वाई जेड देर आर थ्री लोकल वेरिएबल्स ओके कैन वी हैव सेम वेरिएबल इन साइड फंक्शन एंड इन द मेन 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 ब्लॉक हाँ वेर हाँ ये सत्य एक्सलेंट क्वेश्चन बाय द वे वॉट वी कैन डू क्लास सपोज लेट से लेट मी देख दिस एग्जाम्पल ओके आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ वेरिएबल एक्स इज इक्वल टू मे बी सपोज फोर्टी फाइव आई एम स्टोरिंग फॉर नाउ ओके random i'm just randomly showing you this okay this is there okay then in here i am storing uh, this is my function definition okay now i am calling okay now i am calling the add function okay so i will call that function i will i will say 30 sorry let's say 30 okay y is let's say 12 okay so it worked fine right now suppose here if i write print x so what will it print to me class it will print 45 okay so let me show you one more thing suppose class let's say i have a function with me called as def sum okay some random function i am creating okay and suppose let's say i am writing here print uh maybe f plus 4 okay now suppose class i am creating a variable f is equal to 23 okay now sum i have created now if i call the function sum if i call the function sum class so here what will happen it will give us 27 now you can see class f is a global variable so i told you explicitly earlier ki global variable can be accessed from anywhere now it will give us 27 but now let's say due to some reason there is another fun there is uh, a function uh, someone okay and i am i have i have a variable f equal to 6 here okay and i write print f plus 4 okay and then i call the print function oh, sorry someone function so in this case what will happen class it will give us 10 okay but if i call this function this sum what will happen this sum what will happen class in the case of sum function 27 getting this class so what happens the first preference whenever a variable is, is whenever your code will fetch the variable okay it will always try to look the memory variable in the local space okay if it is present locally so here you can see in some, in case of sum one the variable was present locally so it is using f equal to 6 but in the case of sum function the variable was f f variable was not present locally so it will first look for it locally if it is not found in in the local space then it will go to the then it will fetch from the global space provided the variable is present in the global space okay now let's say def so uh, okay now i am creating some print let's say g plus 4 so now in this case class suppose if i call this so function what will happen class it will throw error now because g variable is not present locally it is not even present globally so now class see one thing there is one thing called as trace back now as a good developer you you should know how to like how to uh, what we say understand the source of the error so trace back means what will happen trace back means first the error here you can see first location the the error came is at here okay at this place it is showing you in line number 3 but now it is tracing back the main source of the error from where the actual from where actually the error is originating from so that, that is trace back so from here it went back and it saw it okay it is the error is actually coming from this position this location name g is not defined got this class we shall know it cannot look at another local space now remember i told you explicitly if you remember ki suppose let's say see what will happen let me explain in this case there are three functions i have created sum someone so so what will happen in the global namespace python will create three of them like this 
okay python will create one for f okay so this is your f plus okay this is your so okay this is your sum okay and this is your sum one okay now and this is your global or we also call it as main main namespace okay this is your main namespace now what will happen as soon as i call the sum function okay so our memory space got another namespace got created called as sum sum namespace i am writing in short okay when i call the sum one function so now see first i called the sum function right first i call the sum function here here i call the sum function right so sum namespace got created okay it called it fetch the f value from here okay which is basically current it, it, it was a dead time 23 it fetch the value of 23 from here okay and it printed okay as soon as this function got over okay it flushed out this sum memory from the namespace are you getting this vishal local memory will get flushed out now so how some other function can fetch data from the local memory of some other function is it possible oh memory hi nahi hai na that memory is not present anymore so will it be able to fetch vishal hello plus i am audible no okay now it will come to the sum one function okay it will now it, what it will do it will create another memory space called as sum one okay then it will create another variable called as f okay santil are you getting this now so now there are two fs in the memory in our computer memory there are two fs one is present in the main namespace one is present in the sum one namespace okay and the data present here is 6 this is sum one namespace okay present data is 6 here so it will print f plus 4 as soon as sum one like gets over okay so what it will do it will flush out this then it will come here so it will create another memory space okay called as so namespace okay and print g plus 4 now class what it will do here it is using g so what it will do it will first do it will try it will first try to find the g variable g variable in the local namespace there is no g variable here then it will go to the main namespace it will ask the main namespace that do you have any g variable so main will say no i don't have any g variable so then it will throw error ki bhai it is, i am not getting the g variable in the entire computer memory space anywhere the uh, preference is always given to the local if it is not present in local then on then and then only it will go to the global namespace suppose you want to link g with someone g with someone like when f value change g value also change ha huh? when f value change f value is not changing anywhere so zara i didn't get your question f value change f value is not changing anywhere if you actually see can you be more like specific clear class so far everyone understood the concept of functions completely yes prem हाँ हाँ सुधार यस डेट वी कैन डू आई विल एक्सप्लेन डेट आंसर यस प्रियंक फंक्शन शुड होल्ड ऑप्शन टू पास वेरिएबल एंड टेक रिटर्न एस वेल हाँ यस एंटल डेट इज आल्सो देयर आई विल एक्सप्लेन डेट डोंट वरी बेसिक फंक्शनलिटी ऑफ फंक्शंस आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग फर्स्ट देन देयर आर मेनी मोर थिंग्स प्रेजेंट इन फंक्शन देर इज रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट देर इज देर आर पैरामीटर्स देर आर आर्ग्यूमेंट्स ओके यस देवाशीष
प्रियंक आई डोंट अपलोड द रिकॉर्डिंग इफ यू वॉन्ट द रिकॉर्डिंग लाइक सुन इन प्लीज लाइक इफ यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट यूर लाइक पीओ सी फ्रॉम द टीम ओके I don't have the recording access also from my end. No, there was just no. Okay, class. So let's continue. See, just devices this that you are. Okay, class. I have been using some uh, like method and function, right? These two words I was using the last session. Let me just quickly, like in like in small sense, I will explain difference between them. Basically, function is more like a universal term. Not universal, sorry. It is more of a uh, umbrella term. And method is basically method comes under function. method is a part of function okay methods are basically those functions which are defined inside a class okay there is some, some concept of class some concept of oops that will be covered much later on okay but when you define a function inside a class then it will become a method okay now for now how you can understand it this class Suppose let's say I am saying len. Suppose let's say I have a variable s equal to hello. Okay, I have a list with me one comma two comma six. Okay. Now I can calculate plus I can calculate len of s also. I can calculate len of l also. So tell me one thing: Is the len function connected to string or list in any way? is the len function connected to string or list in any way no na so functions are not binding okay we use a term binding okay i don't know if any of you know if, if devashish if you know if oops or not okay but there is something called as binding okay now what happens in that case that functions are not binded to any entity here entity by entity i mean s and l are entities okay so function is not binded but when i say S dot upper. Okay, so I am using S dot upper now. Am I writing it like this? Ki upper, ah, uh, like this. Am I have written the code like this? No, no. I have I have written S dot upper. I am using the dot notation. I am using the dot notation. So whenever you are using the dot notation, it will automatically become a method. Remember, wherever you use a dot notation, that means it is a method. as simple as that okay and that means that particular method is binded to that particular variable uh, data type here in this case upper method is binded to the string data type can we apply upper on list no okay similarly we write class what you can write here l dot append can you write s dot append can you write s dot append no right why because append is basically a method defined in the list data type or we say list class got this got the basic difference okay if you want to uh, see which one is method which one is uh, function so functions are usually mentioned like this normally not usually always okay but method will be all method will always your use a dot notation okay <coughs> Calling a object from a class is method. No, sir, but no, no. Object is different thing. Method is different thing. We call a method using an object. Okay. So now let's continue class. Function. Yes, sir. All of you understood till here. So let me proceed now. Okay. Ah, uh, this is done. Okay, now suppose class let like like Sandeep like said earlier. Okay, suppose let's say we have some function. Okay, let's take the add function only for now. Okay, because uh, I think we can all of you are under like getting this. Suppose class let's say due to some reason you are saying he 
ठीक है इट इज फाइन दैट वी आर टेकिंग एक्स वाई एंड जेड इन साइड द फंक्शन डेफिनेशन इट इज कम्प्लीटली फाइन बट वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू डू कि आई वॉन्ट टू आई वॉन्ट टू यूज दिस दैट डेटा द एडिशन ऑफ बोथ ऑफ दैम द सम ऑफ बोथ ऑफ दैम आई वॉन्ट टू यूज दिस डेटा ग्लोबली आई वॉन्ट टू स्टोर दिस डेटा ग्लोबली द जेड डेटा ओके द डेटा प्रेजेंट इन साइड जेड वेरियबल सो वॉट वी कैन डू इन दैट केस ओके देर इज अ देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एस रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट Now, return statement. If you remember, I covered this during. I, I didn't. I, I said I use the word, okay, but I didn't cover uh, using uh, during uh, jump statements. Okay, break continue. I, I was explaining now. And so I told you there are three jump statements: break, continue, and return return statement. Okay. So what that same return statement? Okay. So what I will do? I will write here return z. Okay. That's it. Now, class, what I will do? See. Understand this. This in this man. Suppose let's say Abish. Uh, let's say I am there and my my brother is there. Okay. So suppose let's say I ask my brother to make coffee for me. Okay. So my brother is like a function, na? Okay. I called my brother. Okay. My brother will make the entire coffee. Okay. Whatever memory space or whatever he wants to use, he will use. He will do that in his own space, right? And then. He will bring the coffee back to me. Okay. Now, when he will bring coffee back to me, so maybe he will bring that coffee in a thermos or something, right? So I will need something in order to take the coffee from him, right? I will need some placeholder from my end, right? I will need some container from my end, from from my end to take the incoming coffee to store the incoming coffee. Yes or no? Coffee is a global variable, right? because i am sitting in the main cone okay and my brother is working in the global scope in a function okay so he stored the data he stored the coffee inside a kya bolte hai thermos okay and he will bring the data to me so now z is like a thermos in our case z is like a thermos data is present inside the thermos now in order to store the data in the global namespace what you need you will need to store that in a variable now it is totally up to you what you can do Either you can use a Z variable, okay? My brother is storing the data in a thermos. I all I also will store the store store the data in a thermos. But these two are different thermos. Are you getting this class, everyone? The Z variable present inside the function definition is different. The Z variable present in the main code is different. So it is totally up to you how you want to do. Okay. Suppose let's say you want to write it as sum, maybe. Some to not use karna. It is a uh, keyword. Uh, let's take maybe p. Okay, you can take p. So totally up to you. You can use the same variable also, different variable also. For now, I am using the same variable. Okay, no difference at all. So I will write here z equal to add. So what will happen now? Whatever is the return value of the add function, whatever is the return value of the add function will get stored inside the z. <laughs> All of you understood this class or not? Okay. Now, let me show you here. X eight five. You can see it is not printing anything because I have not written. I remove the print statement. Now here the data got stored inside the Z variable. So here, if I write print Z, okay, then you can see it is showing thirteen. There is one more way. Instead of storing, let's suppose you don't want. Let's say you don't. I, what I let, let me show you one. Point. I will create another variable, another function. Ever, average basically. Ha yes, Vishal. Z is now a global variable. Z is a global variable because it is written in the main code. Okay, that's ever. What I will. What I want to do. I want to calculate the average of these two numbers x and y. Okay. Now here I can write z equal to add. Now see class, it is like this. He, I am asking my brother to make coffee for me, and my brother is asking someone else to make the coffee. Okay, so I called a function, and that function called another function in the backend. So I, will I care about that? Will I care about that? No, right? I called a function, and that function is calling another function in the backend to 
do some task. Okay, so it is like that. So z equal to add, and then we can write here. Uh, let's say a v is equal to z by two. And then what I can do? I can write here return a v. Okay, so let me write all these things down in a single cell only, so you will understand better. Okay, these two functions. Now see, if I call ever function, so understand this class how it will do. Okay, suppose if I call ever function, so first it the code will come here, then here at this place. Okay, add add function will be called. Okay, then it will come here, it will come here, it will come here, return z. Okay. Now who called the add function class? Who called the add function? Add function was called from the ever, right? Add function was called inside from inside ever. That means the control will go back to the ever now. From wherever the control got, what happened here class? The control jumped from this position to this position, right? So from the location from which the control jumped from, okay? So Python will make sure the control will come back. Control should come back to the same location from where it left always. Okay. So now here, what will happen? The con after control here, return Z. It, this value will be related to whom? Here, seven. This Z variable will get, this Z will get so this Z. Then here, then here, and then here. Got this class, everyone? What exactly are not getting here, Monica? Hi, I will, I will run the code, don't worry. Okay. Now, class, one more thing. One more thing. Okay. Now, ever function is also returning something, right? Some data. Okay. AV it is returning. Now, what I can do? Instead of storing this data in a variable, suppose I don't want to store it. Okay. I want it in global scope, but I don't want it to store it. I will directly use it. Okay. So, what I can do? I can directly write ever inside a print function. So, whatever data will be returned will be printed directly. See, 8, 5. It is giving us 6.5. Got this class, everyone? All of you got this or not? Okay. Now, let me explain one small thing. Ah, don't worry on time okay. Now there is one more thing that I can do class. Here, instead of storing the data inside the Z variable, what I can do, I can directly write AV is equal to add by two. So what will happen in this case? Let's understand class. First, the code will come here. Ever will be called. It will call ever. So it will come here. Okay, at this place it will come here at line number seven, and it will call the add function. Add function will be called. It will come here, and here it will calculate z. It will return z. Now z will be returned to whom? Z will be z will be returned to whom? Z the the data of the z will come here. At this place that I have highlighted now, the data of Z will come at this position. Okay, that means it's Z and then it will be divided by 2. So the control will come back here. Okay, then it will divide them and then it will return. And whatever data is returned will come back. It will come back where?
this data is coming here. Okay, and let me explain uh, this AV data. You can see the color change. This AV data is coming here. Got this class, everyone? There is no global variable right now, as you see. I'm not storing the ever in global scope. I'm using it in global scope, but I'm not storing it in global scope. There's a difference. Clear class? All of you are getting this class or not? Mamta, got this now? Ah, yeah, you, you might have written, you, have, you might have written like this now. Return should be present inside the function definition. Sasi. It means whatever the data we are returning, it will go to that particular function. Huh? I'm, I'm assuming you're asking for the Z variable, right? Namta? Huh? So Z variable X is what Tell me, add function call this Add function jasik deco. Remember, class, from wherever a particular function will be called from, the data will be returned to that particular location always. Jasitum function call karogi. Exactly usi jagapa data vapa saiga. Nage na piso. Clear class? Line 20 getting output is none. When you wrote print Z, you got none. Have you written return Z here? Vishal. Is the code same? Have you executed all of them in the sequence? Is run kara? Shall maybe paste the code in the chat once. It returns that to whom it will return. Zagdesh, the, the place from where the function is called from, it will return to that location. Okay, from where the function is called from, like here in our case, okay, since I called a function, I call the function from here. No, add function was called from here. So data will come. This Z will come here only at this particular place. Clear class everyone now so far? Understood the return statement? Okay. Now class return statement is basically used for two purposes. Okay, why we call it as jump statement and let me explain. Okay, first task of the return statement is to um, yeah, task is to, to return the value from the function definition to function call. This is the first uh, task. Okay. Second task is to terminate the function definition then and there and return the control to the calling scope. Calling scope means from where the the from from the location from where the function was called from okay that is called as a calling scope okay so by this i mean suppose let's have a function uh you okay now colon i'm just 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 showing you something i'm writing print hello print uh print uh, hi 
print uh, by. Okay. Now, suppose class, I call this your function. So, what will the output class? Ah, yes, I am coming to that. I am going to explain that only. Okay. So, it will give us hello, hi, bye. Now, what I will, what I will do, though? Okay, suppose let's have another function, uh, you, you. Okay. And I have this same data, this same function that is there, but, but there is a return statement here. Okay. This is, there is an empty return statement or maybe you can return something. Maybe you can return uh, 23, totally up to you. Okay. Or you can simply put a return statement, then also will work in the same manner. Now, if I call this yo yo function, what do you think will be the output class? The output should be hello, hi, bye, right? Ideally, okay, no. What happens? It will give us hello and hi only. Why? Because here, what happened exactly? Yo yo got called. Control got jump from here to here. It printed hello. That printed hi. Okay. And as soon as it got written, Okay, so it will terminate the function definition then and there, and it will leave the function definition. The control will come back to the calling score from where the function was called from. Okay, so here you can see return statement is also used to terminate the function definition at a particular place. Got this class? All right, it will come out of the function, yes. Okay. Now, if we write any code after return statement, will Python throw error since the code is not receivable? No. No, Shishang, as you can see here, it is not throwing any error. It will just not execute it. Okay. Now, this particular thing is used in like different ways in the code. Let's explain how. Suppose I'm creating a function. Um, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say, even on. <coughs> okay. Now I am saying he take a number as input. Okay. If n modulus two equal to zero. Now, instead of printing even here, what I can do, I can simply write return even. Achha, one thing, here you saw class in, 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 in this place, I have written return z. Now, z is a variable. Okay, So, it is totally up to you. Either you can return a variable or you can return a data directly also. Okay, Even is a data for us, right? So, you can return data directly also. Else, return odd. Okay, now suppose class, let's say I have written something else here. Print. Hello. So tell me, in any case, in any case, will this hello get printed? Will will, will print? No, no. Either it will return even or it will return odd. Okay. In no, like there is no condition where it will go to the hello. Now, what I can do, suppose let's say class. There is no else. So tell me in which case this hello will be printed. In which case this hello will be printed. When the condition is odd. Excellent. Yes. When the condition, when the condition is false, okay, when the number is odd, in that case, this hello will be printed. Because if it is even. Okay, it will return, return even and it will terminate the function at line number four. It will terminate the function at line number four only. Okay, so it will not print hello in that case. So this kind of things we use smartly also as per the requirement. Suppose let's say we, we want to do a particular task in a particular situation only. So we will write the task inside the function definition. Okay, like this only as you can see. Okay, and suppose we want to print hello when it is odd. So this, then this will, then this will work. Got this class or not?
So instead of else, we can reuse return if we know the condition. Zuzar, again, I'm not getting. Return statement is not, I'm not using the return statement in place of else. These are two different things. Can we identify within the function, the calling block and work differently? Santhil, I didn't get your question, but let me reframe. Tell me if I'm getting it correctly or not. You're saying he from inside the function scope only, you want to check from, from which place the function was actually called from. And based on, based on that, you can control. Okay. Okay. No, directly you cannot do that. No, you cannot actually control from where the function was called from. Uh, you cannot check that. Okay, but you can do some kind of jugad. Okay, but jugad, you understand something? Mm -hmm. Is a Hindi word? I don't know the English for that. Uh, jugad is like what? Uh, what is the English for jugad? Ha, you can create a variable. That is what ha. You can create a workaround. Yes. Okay. So based on variable only you can do. Suppose let's say uh, you can create a variable. Uh, let's say d is equal to. Achha, wait, Chantal, I will come back to your question. Okay, let me just quickly cover complete this. Okay, so you if I'm calling, so you can see class. I can write here maybe uh, let's say status is equal to e. So it will give us even even status. Or here, see, if I write here class, it, it. So, okay. if I give eight, so it is giving us even. But suppose if I give seven, so it will print hello and it will give none. Are you getting this class, everyone? Why it is giving none? Because when the function, when the, when, when I give seven, so did the function return anything? Is the function returning anything in case of seven? No, no. So function in another in, a, in, in another word in, a, in other words you can say the function is not returning anything. Or in other words you can say the function is giving us none, nothing. Got this class, everyone? Okay. Now let me show you something. If I convert the none to bool, this none, okay, so it will give us a false value plus. None means nothing, okay. So this particular thing is also used in this case. How? If EO, are you getting this plus? If statement requires what? If statement is dependent on what? True or false, right? If we give a true, it will work. If you give a no, no devices, no. If statement is not dependent on condition, it is dependent on true or false, just like I explained in while loop. While loop and if statement, both of them are dependent on Boolean value. From which, from where they are getting that Boolean value, they don't care. In major to the scenarios, yes, we mention a condition, okay, but it is not necessary. You can directly give a true false value also. You can give a function also. Okay, so here it will call a function. Now, if the function is returning a true value, now if you actually see class, bool of e1 will give us a true. Okay, bool of e1 will give us a true. That means it's eo. Okay, now I want to do a particular task. Suppose let's say I want to add two numbers. Okay, if I'm getting an even number. If I am getting an even number, then only I will add two numbers. Otherwise, else, uh, else maybe, I don't know. I will do something else. Maybe I will print uh, uh, nothing for now. Getting, got this class, everyone?
Okay, so this is all. This is also one way, correct? Okay, like Abhishek is writing that. That also you can do if you want to. Okay. If you print even else, print out. Okay. That is also clear. Yeah. Clear everyone till here, class. All of that, whatever I've covered so far. Okay. Now do one thing. I'm giving you a question. Okay. Make a calculator. Okay. Having four operations, four operations only. Okay, four arithmetic operations main. Okay, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, arithmetic operations. Okay, you have to use if else. Where? How? Take two numbers as input. Take operator also as input. Take operator also as input. And give the output based on operation chosen. Got the question, everyone, class? See, after line number 30, you can leave this for now. This is too early to understand that because functions are just started. Okay, so you can leave that class. Those are not, not getting yet. That is completely fine. That is that where we use in with some particular cases now. Do this question class quickly. Madhusudan, I will explain that in a while, but do that, do this question first. You have to use if else basically, if else also. You have to make four functions for four operations. Four separate functions for four separate operations. We need to define the x and y and call the function when we select the operator. Ah, yes. Based on the operator, we have to you have to uh, select the function. There will be four functions: addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So, based on the operator that the user gives gives you as input, based on that you will uh, call the function, and then take the input.
done class everyone hello done class everyone So what we'll do class, we'll create a function add. Add even like that. And we can simply write z equal to x plus y. Return z. There is one more thing that you can do class here. You can simply write directly also. Return x plus y okay def subtract return x minus y def all of you have done in different ways that is also fine take okay. care multiply return x into y Def divide return x divided by y. Also, there is one more thing here plus in this case now one more one problem is that if y equal to equal to zero, okay, then division is not possible. Then return division not possible. Not possible. Okay. Either we can re return class. We can write else return x plus y. Or we can simply write it like this also. That will also work. Right? Got getting this in the class. No need to write no need to mention else now in this case. Now we will take here. There is a requirement that x and y should be present in the global scope. The only then the functions will be able to access the data x is x equal to int input enter x y equal to int input enter y then we have to take operator also input enter operator plus minus into and division okay now, if operator equal to equal to what? If operator entered is plus, then we will call the add function. Alice operator equal to equal to minus. We will call the subtract function. Ah, total up to you. You have to take input globally also, or what you can do plus you can put this information x and y. Okay. In every function definition. That also you can do total up to you. Got this class. That also you can do. Alice operator equal to equal to multiply. Multiply. Alice operator equal to equal to divide. Or divide. Else print invalid operator. 
clear class everyone entire code all of you got this acha there is one problem right now i am calling the add function but i am not printing the returned value okay, so there are two ways either i can do what no no there is one more one more okay in this case we can directly write here print Okay, we should be the elif instead of else. Clear class, everyone. Got the entire code or not? All of you understood the functionality of like concept of functions now. See how they can be used at which place. Now you can see we can use add, subtract, multiply, divide anywhere we want to. Please stand error. We have created a function calculator. Num one, num two, operation you are doing. Okay. Here define the function add. Inside the you are defining one function inside another function. You can do that actually, but uh, if operation equal to equal to add, add should be present in quotes, na? When you are writing this operation equal to equal to add, so that will be present. That should be present in quotes. Add, subtract, divide. Equal to equal to के बाद वाला जो add है, that should be in quotes. Rest all is the uh, fine. So in Python, function is declared by only def keyword. No joke. This there is another way. I will cover it later on. Okay. But yes, sir. Ideally, def is used to create a function. <coughs> Sir, how can we use if or elif inside the local function? Normally, just just you use this. Like here, I am using if, na. So here, use elif something. Normally, you use a see the normal code that you write. Okay, the same way you can write inside the function. Sanjay, are you asking something or are you just sharing your code? It's as you read, ha, sir. Papa. Okay, so let's move forward class now. So let's chala ke dekhte hain. So what I'm saying, a plus. Okay, so you ask an x. So you ask a. Y sixty eight. Pranav, can you share the code again? Which code you are using currently? Okay, but this is a let me uh, step by step explain step by step. See here, what will happen? First, the code will come to. This place. First, the code will come to. Or it will take the operator. Based on the operator, suppose that I am giving the plus operator. So it will come here. It will check the first condition. Okay, I have given the plus operator. This first condition will come true. Okay, so now what it it will do? It will call the add function. So control will come here. It will call the add function. From here, it will jump to add function. It will take the x value, x variable from the from the user input, y variable it will take input, and then it will return x plus one. Whatever value will be returned will come back to the come back 
compare at this place, basically to the print function. Okay, so that is the sequence. Got this one, this now? Okay, that uh, internal operation that add that separate that divide that twenty five. This operation equal to to add call add. Are you are not printing na? Return to kar diya kunal. But are you printing the data? That print na? Print add print subtract print divide print multiply. Got that? Okay, and there is no point of writing print cal. Just set cal. Otherwise, it will print none necessarily. Just set print cal. Ah, uh, sorry, just set cal. No, don't, no, 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 don't, don't. Or you can do one more thing here. Uh, Kunal. Okay, as an add, so you can write return add. Return add. Return subtract. Return divide. Return multiply. Actually, is a return statement. These return statements. Are basically for the inner function, na? for the child function, right? This return function data, this return data violated. This is for the child function, but this return here, this is part of which child or parent? Child function or the parent function? Parent, no? This part, this is part of the cal, right? So, ye jo add call karoge. So, what will happen when you will call the add function? So, it will return one plus one plus one two, and then it will come here. And what it will return the value to whom? To the cal function, to the call of the cal function. So now you can write here print. Okay, we have print here, we have print here. Either you can write print cal or you can write print add, subtract, divide, multiply. Clear class so far, everyone? 